Cause they fly Gonna jump on the YouTubes I watch some guy You've got to G'day, g'day, and welcome to my tutorial for FL Studio. Today we're going to be running through some very basic things to get you started on your first song or to get you in the groove. If you've opened it up before and you fiddled around and had no idea what you were doing, I'll help change that. Uh, this video is going to be a bit long. I don't care about watch time or retention, so skip around. I'm going to have some chapter markers. Just skip where you want to watch, skip where you need to learn. Now, we're not going to do anything too fancy. This is going to be a simple one. So I've got a list here on what we're doing. So we're going to be creating a simple beat. Then we're going to use the playlist, which is this bit here where you can layer your song. I'll just show you sort of how to use that, I guess. Like, just it's not hard. Um, adding some extra instruments, such as I'll probably add a bass. Um, using the piano roll. Adding some effects and a few basic tips if I remember at the end. So this video might end up being, I don't know, 15 to 25 minutes. I'm not really one for cutting, I just leave everything in. So if I waffle on, I'm sorry, <laughs> you can always skip. Um, well, I guess without any further ado, let's get started. So what you're gonna see when you first open this program is this. This is the channel rack. Uh, if it doesn't show up, you can click here that button there or press F6. Uh, I don't expect you to remember hotkeys. I've been using this program for years and I don't know any hotkeys except pressing spacebar to play. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, the button's there. Um, now what we're going to start off with, creating a simple beat. Now, you can just click, 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 click. Anywhere you want to click, you got yourself... Whoop, you got yourself doof 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 fill in every two step there you go easy as pie got a basic beat there there are other ways to do drums but that is the absolute most basic way that I think everyone who starts with FL Studios starts with that and it's there's nothing wrong with it I use that all the time um, now what we're going to use uh, do next is the playlist, which is this part in the back. What you're going to see there, pattern one. You can right click on there and rename it and give it a color even. I'm not going to do that. It's just called pattern one. That's our drum pattern that we've just made. You can paint it in there or click them in. You don't have to, you don't have to paint. Uh, and there you go. Now to play it in there, you'll have pattern that plays this, but if you switch it to song, it'll play it there. Uh, yeah, so pattern one, how do we make extra patterns? Well, there's two ways that I can think of. You can put your mouse there and scroll. So now we've got pattern two, I scrolled up. Scroll pattern three, when you put something in there, you'll go to pattern three, pattern four. If you've got nothing in there and you scroll, it'll just go to pattern three but not make any new ones. Um, other than that, you can click down there, new pattern, and then it'll make a pattern too, an empty, an empty pattern too. I don't know why that did that though. Yeah. Oh, because it put it down here and didn't tell me. There we go. That was what that was. Learn something new. I normally don't use that. I just use the scroll wheel. So anyway, so we have pattern one and we have I don't know, um, empty pattern. So we'll use this second one for the baseline. Uh, so what we're going to do is we've got our drums there. You can click there or you can, uh, if you, you can right click and go insert or replace insert will, I think add the instrument above or below it. Replace will just change that into the new instrument. But if you click there, it does the same thing. It just adds a new one. So I'm going to use flex because Flex is a pretty good one. And it comes with FL Studios. Not all of these, but a few of these packs. So I'm gonna use bass guitar. I really like the five string new rock slap. I use that in a lot of rock songs I do. Um, so. Sounds pretty good. 
Uh, so what we're going to do, I'm going to set that to five. What that means is in the mixer, which I don't really, I didn't, wasn't really going to cover that, but then again, we need it later for making effects. Five means it's on the fifth channel. One, one, two, two, three, three. So it just corresponds to what channel it is. Um, I'm actually going to put all of these up one channel and I'll come back to why I did that later. But for now, pretend, just don't even worry about that. That doesn't matter for now. But later on it will and I'm just increasing my efficiency for now. And you know, if you're following along, do that too because it will make things a bit easier later on. So what do I do next? What am I up to? Adding instruments. So I showed you how to add an instrument. You can right click or you can press the plus. Now what we're going to do is use the piano roll. So on uh, the second pattern, right click piano roll. I don't really know what I'm going to make, but that's really low. That's really low. All right, so we're going to do Yeah, okay. Um, this is what we're doing. So that should sound like... Pretty simple. Doesn't matter. Let's paste it in. It's going to sound like this. I'm just going to turn the level down. can see all the stuff happening and enough of that so that's the basics I'm gonna add one more instrument just to repeat it so what we do is well we can start a new pattern so I just scrolled click the plus I'm gonna add another or I might do a different plugin because why not um, let's go with what else do I have some of these are going to be in, um, I'm going to use citrus. Okay, I do own citrus. Some of these are in trial mode, which is a bit shit. But, you know, if you, you probably, if you start now, you either have the, the trial version of FL or you have the producer edition if you've splashed out with some money. I have the producer edition. I had to buy a few of these. But anyway, enough of that. That's pretty loud. I'm going to chuck that onto seven. What are we going to do? You could click here and go presets and look at all that shit. So what do I go with? Let's go synth string. We'll go cello. How's this sound? It sounds horrible, but we're going to use it because I'm not wasting more time. So let's turn that volume down a bit. I don't know how this is going to sound. Let's hear how this monstrosity sounds together. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to sound, to be honest. Still pretty shit, but <laughs> demonstration. All right, uh, what comes next? So we've used the piano roll. I've shown you a couple instruments. We're going to add some effects to those instruments. So I think we don't want that cello sounding so bland. So what am I going to do? You come into here. I've set it as number seven. So we're going to go into number seven here. And we're going to come across to this here. So what we can do is add something. What can we add? Well, I will add, fuck it, we'll add some EQ. EQing is important. I'm going to take away some of that low end. I don't know what that'll do. Let 
There we go. Um, and I'm going to add a bit of delay just to give it a bit of a whatever. I, I'm trying to use stock plugins. I do have a few extras, but I thought we'll use ones that you can probably use as well. Stock delay bank, the fruity delay bank. I'm going to use, I, who knows? Um, we'll go funky tin roof. That's probably going to sound horrible. So it just sounds, that just sounds like a bunch of echo. I don't care anymore, I'm done fiddling. So we got that. You got a few little knobs and stuff you can play with there, but we'll get into that maybe another time if I if I even remember to do more tutorials. What's next? Okay, so we've basically done that. Now I'm gonna tell you a few tips, a few little tips and tricks. First tip I'm gonna teach you, gonna first move that there. I'm going to teach you to use, whoop, not that, sorry, EQ2. Uh, now, I use the Fruity parameter, Parametric EQ2. I use that all the time, especially here. In the master track, I chuck this on here like this, and I go preset, and I go... 20 hertz to eight plus 18 kilohertz cut, or I go 40 hertz plus 18 kilohertz cut. Now, I use the 20 hertz when I'm doing sort of like more EDM sort of stuff. If I'm doing a bit of electronic, reason being I'll get into a second, I use the 40 hertz for pretty much everything else. The 20 hertz, the reason I do that is because human hearing only really goes down to about 50 hertz. Uh, and... What that means is anything below that is just going to be inaudible rumble. And unless you're in a club with, you know, amazing speakers, all that's going to do is muddy up your mix. You won't hear anything, but it will be using energy that the speakers would normally use to project every other frequency, but it'll put it into an, a part of the song no one can really hear unless you're Superman or a whale or something. So um, so I cut that. Now, 20 hertz instead of 40 hertz for EDM, the reason I do that is if your song at some point was ever to be played in a club, those speakers there are great. Because they they want people to be fucking jumping around, having a good time. And what's going to happen is that low end is just going to make the walls fucking vibrate. And you might not hear anything, but you're going to feel it. So I, I leave that little extra, but I still cut the very bottom end. With everything else, I just do that, that 40 hertz cut. Because you don't need it vibrating the walls. That people aren't... You know, if I'm doing a rock song... No one's waiting for that feeling of everything vibrating. They just want to fucking have a good headbang or something, you know? Um, now, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to down the bottom. Now, you're not going to have this, but you should. It's very free. It's called Yulian Loudness Meter 2. Now, this is for all of you who want to chuck your songs up on Spotify or YouTube or anything like that. Not, not so much YouTube, but definitely Spotify and other streaming services. But it's good practice, especially to get in early. What you're going to do is, this is going to uh, listen. Basically, as you play it, it's going to measure the loudness of the song. Not how many decibels it is, but the perceived loudness. It doesn't matter how um, like loud or soft your computer speakers are or your headphones. But... It'll measure the perceived loudness in LUFs. Now, what the range you want for Spotify is it's in negative LUFs. Um, you're going to want negative 14 or 15 on average. I'll start playing now. So 
So as you can see, we've sort of averaged out at 15.4. Uh, that's pretty good. But as you make your song and pile more instruments in, it's going to get louder, probably, unless you're just really natural at leveling. Um, but this is a great tool for seeing. Like what you do is you basically play your song from absolute start to absolute end and you just watch that. And if that's around that, that sort of level for the whole song, you're absolutely in the clear. Um, you can go a little bit louder to the 14. That shouldn't matter. Now we're going to get into why I put everything forward one. See how we've got this little green chain here. This is going to be a pre-master. The reason I'm going to have a pre-master is because this Yulian loudness meter detects everything after the master, but not the master. If I want to make it softer, but I, if I want to make everything softer at once and I pull this down, it's not going to detect anything different. Whereas if we have all of these not chained to there, but everything, whoop, everything chained to the pre-master, we can just pull the pre-master down and that will detect this, it getting softer. And I'll show in a second, just, it's a bit fiddly. I don't know any quicker way to do this. I usually do this at the start of my song. So, uh, let's open the loudness meter again. So, if I pull this down, it's dropping sharply. Whereas if I pull the other one down, it doesn't change whatsoever. It's still playing. Um, so that's one thing. There was one other thing. Oh yes. We've got our different effects here. Um, what did I add effects to? So I added effects there. Let's add one more effect. What can we add? I'm gonna, okay, so this one, no, we'll use Fruity Compressor and I'll give it a uh, level of one. I don't know how that's gonna sound. Now, I'm gonna play this on its own. So I just held control and clicked the green button for that. Now, it sound basically what I'm gonna tell you here is that these are not added together. They're not smooshed and mixed into a little mixture here. They are layered on top of each other. It's like a ladder. It's a hierarchy. The top one, slot one, is calculated first, then, you know, down to slot 10. So if these are in a different order, they may sound different, which you can use in songs. And it's something I think a lot of people don't realize or don't make use of. Um, and it's probably a bit more advanced than it needs to be for this video, but it's something that I know I'm going to forget if I don't mention it now in this video. So I don't know if this will change the, how it sounds at all, but I'll flick them over and see if it changes anything subtle. There we go, there's a difference. So you can hear how, like, the, depending on the order they're in, they may change the way it sounds. Uh, I was moving those by scrolling, so you just put your mouse over one and you scroll and it'll just hop around. Um, but that's that. That's something to keep in mind. I know I'll never mention it again if I don't mention it now. Uh, I hope you've learnt something because I think this is all I can think of to talk about. But I'm going to try and go into more detail on some of these other ones. Now, don't forget Yulian Loudness Meter. It is free. You can download it. You can just Google it and install it. Um, and actually, what you can do to add to add this in, you would then go add more plugins, manage plugins, and oh. It opened up on my second screen. There we go. And what you will find here, you'll go find installed plugins. You click it, and then you sc once it's found it, you scroll down. So that's a bit of an extra tip for you. Um, I'll go again. You go add more plugins, 
this will pop up. You go manage plugins, this will pop up, find installed plugins, click that. It will search your computer through, I think, I think it will just search the places that they're normally installed or it might do a full system scan. I don't actually know that, but you know, if you just install them to their default locations, you won't have an issue. Uh, it'll find them and then you scroll through here and you can just star whichever ones you want because they sometimes don't appear if you don't click a little star next to them. Then once that's done, you can go back in here and it should show up, should show up here. Oh, I forgot to mention something. So when it comes to adding an instrument, you've got, where is it? So you can do it here, but you've got your sample packs here. So if you want to change the sound of these drums, uh, we'll go to, you've got legacy drums. I use real drum kit. So we've got a kick drum that sounds like this. No, why do I, oh yeah. It would sound like that. Sounds like this. If I change it to real drum kick two, it'll sound. So you can drag and drop them in to just replace it without having to do it again. Um, that should have really been in the uh, adding instruments part or the creating a simple beat part. But you know, if you've watched all of this, there's a little extra help for you. Thank you for watching. This has been 22 minutes long. Go get yourself a nice cold beer.